Welcome back, Locked On Bulldogs. It is one of our favorite times in the entire universe. John Garcia talking recruits. And I'm going to ask him a question of maybe some 18-year-old who's going to start opposite of another barely 18, 19-year-old guy and why that's great news for Georgia coming up next. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everybody. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. More on them in a moment. But we welcome in John Garcia. If you don't know who he is, uh, he is recruiting all things in America. This man just knows uh, these recruits like the back of his hand. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good to be on with you. A first time, I think, since uh, the dogs won it all, huh? Uh, so yes, that's exactly your right. Audience. Yeah. Uh, yes, and if you don't know John, you'll get to know him very well. Uh, this guy is... Like I said, very connected to the recruiting world, and Georgia is no stranger to getting the big-time recruits. Uh, so I, I want to start, John, by asking you a question. Uh, we have seen one of the greatest safeties, uh, I think the most uh, – all around best safety Georgia's had Christopher Smith in a very long time. And that's not discrediting a lot of guys, but man, that guy can fill an alley as well as go over the top. He was a anchor point in this D DB group last year. He moves on going to the NFL uh, and that presents a giant hole in the secondary. Now this cat Agrero that we get in this year's class coming in on campus I'm going to make the statement and see how you back it up. I think he starts opposite Malachi Starks right now. Today, he's the penciled in starter for me. What do you think about that? It's certainly possible. I think Jonell's that good. I think the last time we were on, it was after signing day. We were talking about guys who we thought could make that day one impact. And he's the first one in this loaded class. And I want to emphasize that he was the first one that came to mind. And not only because, yeah, there could be some turnover in that secondary with Smith and Ringo, some of these guys moving on, but really because of the skill set, he's one that you could theoretically throw in as a potential replacement for both Ringo and Smith. And there's just not a lot of high schoolers that we associate in that light, not only from a physical perspective, but from a technical perspective, what his skill set is, is a versatile, any single DB spot type of, of, spot of type of role and I think when you talk about safety naturally we've already seen Georgia transition there so very well with a freshman and the difference between him and Starks is he's already done it Starks it was a it was a projection it was a well he has all this juiced up athleticism if we filter that into the safety spot yes. everybody watch out and that's exactly what happened I mean freshman all-american like by game three it was already penciled in but with Aguero, he's already done it at the highest level at both corner and safety. And I think that is where he provides value. And speaking of Chris Smith, when I was scouting Chris, he was a corner in high school. He was a technical corner who had great length and understanding of where the football was going. And that's some of the same stuff we say about Jonel Aguero, except he's bigger and he's more mm. physical at the same stage. So there's just a lot to like there. I mean, one example here was the last time I saw Jonel. It was at the Under Armour week, and they were doing they were doing this kind of like Pro Bowl skills type of competition, okay. and they were doing call-outs, guys who call out receivers calling out DBs and vice versa. Ooh. It was a jump ball 50-50 drill in the end zone. Deuce Robinson was the receiver. For okay. those of you listening, Deuce uh -huh. Robinson is 6'5", 6'6". The DB that was called out, maybe his future teammate, was Jonel Aguero. And three of the four reps, Aguero won either at the line of scrimmage or, more impressively, at the catch point when the ball was actually coming down in, into Robinson's hands. So um, when you're six inches shorter and probably 30 pounds lighter and you're winning at the catch point against that guy, it really does say a lot about your ability and your understanding of the flight of the football. And that's just the one sample, the most recent of – what Jonel Aguero brings to the table. And I think that's probably the reason why a lot of other folks were like, let's move this kid up the rankings just a little bit because he really answers the bell every time you see him. That's exactly right. Uh, 
John called his shot last year, talking about our edge guys making an impact, and they did this year. He's calling a shot with Aguero. I, I agree. Malachi Stars came on the scene at Oregon, had that that ball skill, that ball hawking ability, and we saw it right away, instantaneously. And I leapt for joy, and I said, "I'm all in on this guy," because you don't see that in phase ball skill from 18 year old kid. You just don't see it. Well, here's one, and now here's another. And if you want to talk about, go watch Deuce's tape, y'all. This is stupid what that cat can do and now you're telling me there's a guy who beat him three out of that's that's ridiculous uh now smoke comes over in the portal uh from a and m uh maybe he slots down in that star kind of that 50 b near the line for uga yeah. or maybe he gets some reps at safety i think we're gonna see uh, a lot of rotation early on in the spring but uh, man if i had if i had one guy one new face to say starting from day one it's going to be a girl. Uh, and also a guy that gets a bump is Impimba. I, I don't know why he wasn't already way up on the board. Um, again, sometimes your, your, your analytics lie when your eyes should just tell you that dude is different. Um, does Impimba have the same ability to do a, a Michael, a, 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 a in, influence like that from day one as well? Potentially. I mean, I think from an athletic profile standpoint, it's absolutely there. Maybe the reason some folks were slower on him was because we we saw so much tight end with him as a junior that That's we were right. kind of waiting to see it all come together as a senior. But boy, it came together quickly. I mean, he was beating Francis Maui Goa about at a 50-50 clip there in practice uh, at IMG. Maui Goa may be the number one OT in the country this past year. And then, you know, as the year went on, he just kept getting bigger. I think mm -hmm. that was the most surprising element when we saw him at Under Armour, we were just like, that's in Pemba. He looked 15 pounds heavier, but in a very good way, he went from, okay, I could see where he was a hybrid tight end to, Oh no, no, no. This is an edge. This is yeah. a no doubter edge. This, he kind of looks like Michael Williams, a little bit more rocked up version of Michael Ooh. Williams physically coming off the bus. Now from a technical standpoint, he's a year into this thing. So he's got a little bit of, of ways to go, but We've seen it uh, year in, year out at great programs. You can rotate in that freaky freshman, even if the technique isn't That's quite right. there. And I do think Mpemba's got that upside. The first step is great. He's incredibly strong and balanced in how he attacks an offensive lineman. And he has developed some of those counter moves because everybody thought he would try to win with speed. So over the last year, he is working some of those interior moves, spins, club, push pulls, mole overs, all of those elements that make you a well-rounded pass rusher. He is adding to his repertoire. So, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he cracks, uh, you know, a third down package and actually mm -hmm. makes some plays pretty soon. Yeah, that's right. Michael Williams came onto the scene. And if you saw him in Ohio State game was wrecking a first round tackle to get to the quarterback um and if you're telling me that the physical attributes are there and yet again what kirby does so well at uga is not only recruit these guys and we call them lotto tickets that's not diminishing these guys because not all ratings are the same I, i'm just saying certain lotto tickets have better percentages of hitting that's what these star rankings are now kirby's going to get them and develop them and that's what really is going to change i'm going to come back after this and uh, ask john about our chances legitimately at maybe the best quarterback in a couple of cycles uh, but first i want to let you know about about FanDuel. FanDuel is the place that Daniel and I are going now. It is fantastic. It is great for all the bets that we have. We love FanDuel. Why do we love it? Well, if you look at their interface, they're fantastic. If you look at their website, it's fantastic. They are safe. They're reliable. Uh, they have everything that we need. We're really excited about this. Uh, and because they are the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy and right now you make a five dollar bet you get 150 dollars in free bets guaranteed when you place that first five dollar bet sign up now at fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel has all your favorite bets from money line to point spreads to player props plus you can even combine your bets for a chance for a bigger payout with same game parlay we love betting. We'll have locks all the time for this coming year. Masters coming up. Get a futures in on that. Uh, do not go Patrick Reed. He is dead to us. But football fans, don't miss out. First $5, get $150 in free bets. Win or lose, fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of Locked On Bulldogs and the NFL. John, I teased before break. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation going around uh, that Georgia has a shot at another number one all-world quarterback, and that's Dylan Raiola. Um, and 
he's he's got a lot of West Coast ties. I get that. And Lincoln Riley at USC looks very, very interesting. But there seems to be some more smoke coming from this connection to Georgia. Uh, maybe I'll just start there. How real is this smoke? Is it real or should it just be discontinued as a thought for UGA fans? No, this is totally real. This is really real, as as they say, uh, <laughs> quite simply. Uh, yeah, Georgia is absolutely not, not only in the mix, but among those at the top of the mix. Like you said, there are some obvious connections elsewhere, right? Look, when you're a West Coast kid at quarterback and Lincoln Riley wants you at USC, going to be tough to beat. We yeah. understand it, right? But there's other connections at Nebraska, right? All the family ties that that are there. He was committed to Ohio State. What do they stay in the mix for him? You know, there are are pulls and pushes in a lot of directions, which I think is good news for Georgia mm -hmm. because it's going to make it very hard on Dylan. And what happens when all things are even? You're going to go to the place where the situation is different than all the other schools that you've mentioned, and that's what Georgia can present. It could present the most physical and well-developed offensive line, independent of name. It could present the best defense, independent of opponent. And obviously, it could pre present the best winning percentage and build up towards being great without having to be the savior recruit at certain programs. Look, if yes. Dylan Rayola picks Nebraska, he's going to get the Arch Manning, Trevor Lawrence, like all-encompassing, you better – be the guy for us, Quinn Ewers at Texas kind of thing. If he comes to Georgia, he's just the next one. He's not the one. So I, I just think there's so many variables that push well towards UGA. And he's taken a closer look at the program, obviously, since decommitting from Ohio State. Uh, I believe he was at the national title game. So he was. Uh, if you were there, I mean, I, I was watching on TV and I was – you know, jaw drop. So imagine being there as a teenager when that school and that coach and that coordinator, let's not leave out Todd Monken. Oh, no, no. Those guys want you very badly. Sometimes it's simple in recruiting, right? We like to get all technical and detailed and say, hey, this coach came by and really made a big influence, stopped by his dad. Da, da, da. Sometimes it's very simple. When, when you're Georgia right now, in this very moment, coming off of back-to-back -back natties for the first time in, in over a decade for any school, you have an inherent advantage over every other program that you are competing with, even in Ohio State, which had Rayola committed. So I think, yes, this is legitimate smoke for the Bulldogs. Uh, look, all these schools are going to try. He's a West Coast kid. He's the number one quarterback, I think unanimous in this class at this point, uh, and he's uncommitted. So there's going to be competition and potentially time in between now and a decision, but you expect Georgia to stay at or near the top of this race until he comes off the board. And I think the Bulldogs shifting their chips his way says a lot, right? Because it's a pretty good quarterback class at the top. You've already got one on board. Um, you, you've been in and out of the Jaden Davis race, kid out of Charlotte, much closer to home. Yet and still, Georgia is pushing all in on Rayola. And that is the type of boldness that it takes, right? Georgia did it last year with Arch Manning, didn't work out, right? So what happened? They didn't take a quarterback. I mean, nope. it's, it's literally black and white. So now in 24, they're doing so early at this point on, on Rayola. And I'm not in a position to bet against them at this stage. As we are presented things right now, I think Georgia – is the favorite in this recruitment. No, Nebraska will have the family ties and USC will have the geography on its side, but almost everything else is going to point, you know, red and black. That's exactly right. And that's why I think we do have a legit shot at this. And it does feel different than the Arch Manning. Arch Manning has a brand that he wants to bring into something. And going to Texas makes that Manning brand very, very illustrious for him specifically. Rayola wants to, like you said, be the next in this line. And yes, Todd Munkin, I I've said that he is the best offensive mind in college football right now. And there's no, you include Lincoln Riley out there. I don't care. I, I will, I will take him every single, I know that Lincoln's really, really good. And I'm not discrediting that, but this is real. And if that's the case, people be talking to George all the time. Like, Oh, Hey, you had a walk on, you had a guy that had no stars. Yada, yada. Okay. Just imagine, like you said, now we have an offensive line that just year in, year out gels. I don't They don't give up sacks. That's, that's the new standard. And then a defense that says, sure, take everybody you want to the NFL. 
We're going to be in every game. We might be better. Without. We might be. be <laughs> gosh, we said that last week and we were reminded. We said we might be better. And then we said, oh, my gosh, we said that last year. And mm. sure enough, look what happened. Now, yeah. Raiola comes and says, yeah, I want Todd Munkin, who has NFL ties. Hello. Again, this young man wants to establish himself. Uh, it is certainly something to keep an eye on, dog fans. And I love hearing that there is actual smoke to this or actual fire to the smoke. I'm going to come back after this and ask John about other classes uh, that Georgia might be already making juggernauts in right after this. All right, John, the recruiting class for this year looks to be substantial. You called it just loaded, and I agree. It is loaded at this top end with this class. Uh, but we already are working. How recruiting works is you have to get out there early, so uh, there's no time like the presence. Uh, present 2023 and 2024 uh, recruiting classes, guys that are already looking at it. Uh, we got the enrollees for 2023. Like I said, 2024, uh, we got a, a kid out of California, this safety who I, I want to talk about because I know we've already talked about safeties, but I, my goodness, what are your, is, is, is another dude. How is this yes. possible? <laughs> because th th this is what you do. You stack these classes on top of, of each other and you show that you can go anywhere to go get it. And Georgia's already done that. I think this is just another example of it. This 24 class is already up to eight kids, right? Yes. Uh, you've got your closer to home guys, as you would imagine, right? Your, your cold quit guys, you went down into Bama, you're going to go into Florida. That's always going to be the case. But where Georgia can flex is when you go out to California a year ahead of time and go get a kid from the number one high school in the country, St. John number and Bosco. One. That's right. And it wasn't dramatic going into it. There was a Georgia feel going into it. So, uh, yeah, this this defensive prowess is going to be hard to beat for anybody, including Bama, including a and after what they did two years ago. This is sort of Georgia's side of the ball to draft as opposed to recruit, uh, as opposed to offense, yes. where it does feel like there's a little bit more – competition at quarterback and receiver and some of these spots for Georgia, but O-line and all of the defensive positions that you can conceive Georgia's really in, in pole position to go select its priorities and win most of those battles. And if that continues, then there's really no end in sight to, to this reign, this dynasty that is being built right before our eyes, right? At what point do we turn that corner and say, it's not that Georgia's next, it's that Georgia's now. You know, at what exactly point right. do you make that distinction um, when you go back to back in this dominant fashion? Um, it's it's now, you know, one one loss yep. in the last two years and, and it was avenged very quickly thereafter. So there's really there's no point that you can emphasize to to dethrone UGA at this moment. And when that's so clear. We talk about how perception is important in recruiting. When it's so clear to us, imagine how it's being communicated and filtered to the 17 or 18 year old, or in this case, maybe a 16 year old who has that Georgia scholarship offer on defense, even though it's whatever, 3,400 miles away from Athens, whatever the number is. Yes. It just, it just doesn't matter. And that's the position Georgia's at right now. And Peyton Woodyard is a great example of that. He is a big, balanced, uh, safety type that maybe he grows into a rover hybrid type. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's your next Lewis scene. Whatever it is, he he can bring a lot to the table. Um, how good is George's future when we don't even talk about him as one of the the most recent guys? I mean, it's it's yes. it's that that's how absurd it's becoming at UGA. And yeah, Woodyard is next safety up after maybe the Aguero Starks combination moves on. That's exactly right. And and it is this offense defense. I think offensively there is a rotation enough and Todd Munkin is not going to force feed anybody the ball. He's going to have the readability of a quarterback to go out there and do it. And if you start force feeding the ball, um we've seen you're you're done. Dwan Mathis, you you were for, you're done. You can't play in the system. And so offensive guys, I, I hear that. Defensive guys go out and eat. And if you could prove you can eat Kirby and staff has no problem just shoving you onto the field. I don't care your name. I don't care your seniority. I don't care about any of that. As a matter of fact, all I care about is getting you in the league to record numbers. And so, yes, I, I love this ability, this draft that you talk about. It is. Kirby Smart right now is just picking his dudes on defense and saying, I want all of them. Go get them. And we saw it last year uh, and the year before with defensive end as well as some this year. Now we're seeing it, I think, in the secondary with last year's haul and this year's haul at, at DB. And now this just continues that trend. It's a plethora of riches. 
I don't understand how it's even possible still. Cause like you said, we're talking about it. These kids are talking about it more every single day. And when that helicopter lands, it's something different in the Kirby copter. Uh, 2025 already have four commits as well. Get some trench guys uh, as well as linebacker. And uh, just, I, I want the fans to know when you are two years out and you commit and, and, I'm going to say this as when Kirby allows you to commit that early um, and you do. So you honor that. And do what does it tell you about these guys that are two years out already committing to Georgia? It would tell me even without looking, it will tell me that from an athletic profile standpoint, these guys are already there. Yeah. It's not, Oh, well, if all this weight comes on and if he gets taller and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to look and read off <laughs> a running back six foot two Oh five. A D lineman, 6'5", 270. An OT from Viger High School uh, in Alabama, 6'5", 315. It's all, they're already there. That's what it tells me. There's enough conviction from the Georgia side of this to take multiple commitments in the class of 25. And I think that number increases here over the next few weeks and months because you've got junior days. Uh, mm. Spring practice is going to ramp up, and kids are going to flock to UGA to – Claim their spot. And that's, again, when you are at the mountaintop, you have all the leverage when it comes to your staff, your current players, and certainly with recruiting. You have all the leverage in those conversations. So if if you want to be bold and, and say take it or leave it, kids are going to take it more times than not. Uh, and, and otherwise, you're going to stay in the race for the very best at just about every single position. So if, if there ever was a time to take some guys early because – You've got the conviction that physically they're mm -hmm. going to develop more, and but they already show that floor that they're there. Go ahead and do it uh, because you're Georgia. You're at the mountaintop right now, and I don't think anybody's going to take away from some of those decisions two years out. And if they don't work out, you can move on. Georgia's not afraid to, to move on from a prospect, and it's frowned upon, and it's not PC, but, you know, that's not how you win national titles by appeasing uh, the masses. You have to stay in line with what you do. And like Kirby said in that pregame interview, I mean, it's, it's about hunting. They're going to go hunt. Mm. And, and that, that carries over. When I heard that, by the way, I was like, Oh no. Oh he, no. He, like, they this, asked a question. I'm a journalist. So TCU was an amazing story. Yes. I knew they weren't going to win, but I was like, maybe they'll just go bombs away and try to figure something out. But when he said, we're going to go hunt pregame at the Natty. I was like, oh, no, this this is a lot of confidence. Even for Kirby, this is a lot. So anyway, when you have that at your at that wind at your back, you're going to be able to go recruit multiple classes with relative ease on the front end. And if you make decisions later, you have you have bought the stock enough mm -hmm. for folks to not be able to question it very much. And that's where, again, UGA is at right now. Uh, you're exactly right. This is and and it is not PC. I think if I understand how Georgia recruiting has done, they are doing services to these young men, these early guys. If they're going to move on, they do right by them because Kirby knows as well. The portal's still out there. So we don't want to burn any bridges. We're not going to do anybody dirty. Uh, sure. However, we will be honest. And this is what I think people that want to come, the alphas of these recruiting classes, want to come get coached hard from Kirby and that is exactly what he does so yes to your point these cats fit every check mark production check already up there at the camps as a sophomore yeah check skill size check and now it's just continue that where maybe later on a lad McConkey type player that doesn't check those things early on you could bring in and develop because Kirby has this kind of gut level eye for kids to say like no there's something we can work with and those fill in the holes after you get what I'm just going to call like the, the heritage recruits, not heritage as in lineage to UGA, but Kirby's guys, his linebackers, his running backs, his trench guys. OK, that's the foundation. And then let's add. So, yes, to your point, um, I, I will go watch film on these guys later as more comes out. And I already know what I'm going to see. It's going to be freaks. Correct that's what I'm going to see. And it's just going to be confirmed. And then later in Pimba, the guy who's this hybrid who we see development can come in and he might be the steel of it, but the foundation was already laid well before him in that class. Uh, this is John Garcia. John, where can people find you over on Twitter and follow and hear from you? Yeah, Twitter, real simple. It's just my name, John Garcia underscore JR. Uh, a lot of locked on shows like like this fine program and a couple other ones as well. So yeah, come check us out and we'll talk ball at every level. That's exactly right. This is John Garcia. 
for Locked On Bulldogs. Been a joy. We will see you guys later. Come back the rest of this week. See you.